The year was 2008, and the U.S. just experienced one of the most devastating financial market crashes since the 30s. As a result, millions of Americans are left feeling the negative repercussions cultivated by greedy banks. Now, I was too young to fully understand the economic turmoil that would later ensue, but just three years ago, I fell victim to fraud. Fraud conducted by a major bank here in the States, along with 3.5 million other Americans. Once again, banks were too big to fail as we got exploited, as, as we continued to get exploited, being slapped with a small fine of only $180 million. It was in that moment I knew that I wanted to tackle these century-old institutions that have failed to evolve and that continue to serve themselves at our expense. Blockchain technology, since its implementation, has been radically disrupting many industries, the financial sector being one of the first. Following Bitcoin's 10th year anniversary just last month, we are just starting to realize the potential use cases for blockchain technology outside of the financial sector. But what is blockchain? Simply put, blockchain is a distributed ledger that provides an unalterable, semi-public record of every single transaction that has occurred. And the reason why we need blockchain is really straightforward. Transactions occur every single second in the form of order payments, account tracking, and even data transferring. Now, often each member has their own ledger, which means their own version of the truth. Having multiple ledgers is a recipe for error, fraud, and inefficiencies. That's exactly why I propose that we not only embrace blockchain, but also adopt and integrate it into our already existing technological ecosystem, with the ultimate goal to see transactions end to end to help reduce these type of vulnerabilities. Now, don't worry. I understand this may sound daunting at first. Don't feel overwhelmed. If there's anything I want you to take away from this talk, it's that blockchain is more secure, it's more effective, and it's less expensive. I have a couple of goals that I, wanna, I believe blockchain can help us accomplish, and these goals are rather important, as they affect each and one of us, every single one of us on a day-to-day -day basis. Goal number one, reduce inefficiencies. Now, third-party intermediaries, such as big banks, have been a necessary evil for us, especially when transferring assets of value, such as money, real estate titles, intellectual property, even creative property. Bitcoin demonstrated that you could transfer assets of value around the world in a second for pennies on the dollar without third-party intermediaries, slowing it down and taking a cut of the action. However, the transferring of itself was essentially the extent of its capabilities. Ethereum was, blocked, was Bitcoin on steroids. The Canadian-based startup allowed for the creation of dApps, or decentralized applications, and more notably, smart contracts. Smart contracts. These smart contracts are glorified self-executing contracts, programs in the air, essentially. And in my opinion, they're most analogous to a vending machine. If money in, click a button, equals a product. Now imagine I have this dollar bill, and I'm placing it into this vending machine. I place a dollar in, I click Coca-Cola. The vending machine is our smart contract, and it acts as an agreement between you and I. And as a result, a Coca-Cola is dispensed. Smart contracts, if A, then B. Now this is where it gets really exciting. These smart contracts are embedded into the blockchain, which means they inherit the same type of cryptographic properties which powers the tech, such as making it more secure, more effective, and less expensive. Now, these smart contracts are also on the internet, which means they get to communicate with other things on the internet, or rather, internet of things. Now, these smart contracts are not exclusive to the financial sector in the form of clearinghouses, but rather leak into every other industry imaginable. Let's take this application and apply it to a real-world scenario, like insurance. Imagine, you just got out of work from a busy week. You're headed westbound on I-40 listening to your favorite song. Now, as you're headed home, a lunatic driver speeds off the freeway, ramming straight into you. Now you're left with a totaled vehicle and a whiplash neck. Blockchain cannot fix your neck. It's amazing, but not a miracle. But it, can, it is connected to the smart devices connected to your vehicle which means as soon as the incident occurs, an accident flag is triggered. When the quickly after, the smart contract gathers enough information to realize that you 
the driver were not at fault. And in that moment, the insurance claim is settled like that and money hits your account seconds later. No longer are you having to spend hours or days on the phone or sifting through mountains of paperwork to get this insurance claim, uh, claim settled. Rather, smart contracts auto-regulate and autonomize the whole process, making it once again more secure, more effective, and less expensive. Like I said, it is not exclusively reserved for the financial sector or insurance. Rather, it leaks into every other industry imaginable. And that brings me to goal number two, eliminate fraud. Now, there have been recent debates over the last presidential election, and regardless of your political affiliation, we must not be ignorant to the fact that fraudulent voting has been a problem with us here in America, and that the 2016 election was not an anomaly. Regardless if, you, if it actually happened or not, that's a completely different topic, um, but blockchain can help prevent it from occurring altogether and prevent it from ever being a topic of discussion. And here's how. The problem with voting is that systems aren't able to effectively prevent citizens from part, uh, non based citizens from participating while simultaneously preventing the same citizen from casting multiple votes. This derives a problem cryptographers formally call a double spend attack. Double spend attack. Now, this double spend attack, double, single use asset being spent multiple times, is more commonly found inside the financial sector as counterfeited money or fraudulent transactions. But once again, it's not exclusive to the financial sector. As I said before, it leaks into every other industry imaginable. Now, let's just imagine real quick that the voting system is now on the blockchain. Each person receives one vote or one token. The goal here is to prevent that single person from using that vote or that token multiple times. Now, momentarily, I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself to your neighbors. I want you to get their names and remember them as it's important. I'm going to give you all five seconds to do this before I continue my talk. Ready, go. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, okay, perfect. You got their name. You got their name. You got their name. All right. So now that you have their name, let's, let's imagine that, each, that you and each other member in the audience represents one block. One person equals one block. Now these blocks all consist of thousands of transactions, or for this instance, votes. One person, one block. Now one name of each person represents one hash of each block. Now blockchain uses something called a hash pointing system, hash pointing system. And all that means is clever math is helping blocks remember the hash of its neighboring blocks, just like you, the audience, remember your neighbor's names. Now that we have one person representing one block, one name of one person representing one hash of each block, I'm going to act as a malicious attacker with the intention to implement thousands of fraudulent votes or transactions into the system. And I'm going to do that by strategically placing this block between you and the person to your left. Now, because you remember the person's name to your left, you recognize that I don't belong there and rejecting me from the chain. Now, let's say for whatever reason, you forget the person's name to your left and you allow me to sit next to you. Luckily for us, the person to your left remembers your name, once again, recognizing that I don't belong there and rejecting me from the chain. Congratulations! You just helped prevent a fraudulent attack from occurring. And it's literally that simple. Now we're using this hash pointing system in our company to help make transactions once again more secure, more effective, and less expensive, with the ultimate goal to reinvent the way banking is perceived. Now following Bitcoin's 10th year anniversary just last month, we are barely starting to realize the potential use cases for blockchain technology outside of the financial sector. And smart contracts are just the beginning. That's why I propose that we not only embrace blockchain, but also adopt and integrate it into our already existing technological ecosystem for one, to once again make sure transactions are more secure, more effective, and less expensive. Blockchain has the immense potential to radically revolutionize and even revitalize stagnant industries if we allow.